right, so day 31. Right, incline, your upper chest is gonna be the hardest to grow, so you're gonna to wanna to put the most emphasis on it. And I've said this before, you know, the hardest things to grow are the ones that are gonna be the most impressive to have. Right, having big legs, it's fucking impressive. Having a big set of arms, I guess that's kind of a, a mute point. Having a big set of anything is gonna be impressive. But you get the gist. So I'm gonna finish this pre. Try not to piss off this cop that I'm passing. And uh, get in there and get sorted. So fucking see you in there. All right, so standard procedure. Get the triceps a little bit warmed up. Do a little bit of, uh, you know, I'll spend kind of long warming up for chest day. Like I'll, I'll just kind of fuck around on the cables, make sure everything's, uh, you know, gets warmed up at full point. Because the worst thing you can do is get under like a bar or bench or the dumbbells, and then your your uh, like your elbows a little sore. Because you didn't freaking warm up with some triceps or your shoulders stiff. You know, you're just setting yourself up for failure at that point. So, for back, you know, I just jump right into flat pull downs. Pretty simple, uh, simple movement. Yeah. But for chest, you know, because everybody fucking tweaks their shoulder doing bench or they fuck up whatever else. Uh, I'd say it's a little bit more of a risky lift, relatively. So, the more time you spend warming up, I'd say the better. All right, so, it's been a little while since I've done some barbell bench. I'm gonna try not to totally fuck myself up. But, for whatever reason, I wanted to get it going today. All right. The three plates should be getting pretty much close to about what I'm going to want to hit. I'll have to see how they feel. All right, you take that a little heavier. Yeah. Fuck barbell. It's just not the same feeling as dumbbell, man. I don't know what I was thinking. So, you know, went heavy on the barbell. I'm already exposed to, you know, high tension, right? I'm exposed to, uh, 
the amount of weight that my worst of the sets are going to be. So I don't need to do any more warm-up sets, right? If you're working the same muscle and you jump between different exercises, there's no point doing a feeler set on each new exercise you go to. Just jump to your the working weight that you know is going to be pretty heavy for you because even though it's a new exercise, your fucking muscle doesn't know the difference. All it knows is like, shit, I'm warmed up. I'm ready to hit some fucking weight. So I don't need to touch the hundreds. I don't need to do the 110s. We can get right to the 150s here. You know, as strong as I'm getting, the 150s are as heavy as ever because of it. Yesterday during legs, I accidentally broke the lid of my jug. So until I get a new one, I'm just gonna be reusing these uh, these Tropicana fruit bottles. But contents are the same. Still drinking the Tang. It's just an orange flavored sugary drink mix. No aminos. As long as you eat your protein, like you do your protein shakes, everything like that. I think the, uh, the taking aminos intra workout is just a money grab. I wouldn't worry about it. All right, that was a pretty smooth setup. fucking heavy man all right let's let's move on to something I don't know yet. Oh. I'm thinking while I'm still strong you know relatively you know, over the course of your workout you should get weaker because you're fatiguing and exhausting the muscle then still early on I'll throw in some maxed out stack sets of this.
All right, so that makes six sets, five more. So I'm thinking, let's throw some peck deck in next. Similarly to uh, a lot of different lifts I'll do, if I'm just doing a straight set, no drop set or nothing, if the form starts to get sloppy, if that's the, if that's the only way you can keep going, you know, I say get a little creative with it. I'd rather do a set of 15 heavy dumbbell curls or the last five I'm swinging into those last few reps rather than just sit here like a robot and do like half the reps just because I like I'll reach failure and I'm like oh I give up even though you've got more gas in the tank right Ugh. So like I was saying before about biasing your upper chest, even when I'm doing these flat flies, I'm still like, as I'm squeezing and I pull this, these two handles together, I'm also pushing upward at the same time, right? So even though I'm moving in this direction, I'm almost feeling like I'm trying to go up. And then of course, if you, uh, if you've got a reasonable mind muscle connection, then you should be able to feel a specific part of your pec being worked. And when you do the pec tech like this, you should be able to feel some upper chest activation more than just the middle or lower. All right. So three more sets left for chest. I'm thinking similar to what I did last time. Uh, but this time I'm going to start at least uh, the two sets with uh, some cable press. So you grab the cables the same as though you're going to do a fly. You take a few steps in front of you so that you're actually pressing rather than doing a fly motion. So I'll do two of those, then put the weight down, lower it, superset it with some flies, and I'll probably finish with something else, but this will be the start. And then I kind of feel like I'm really putting a lot of tension on my forearms. If I were to just try and squeeze this weight together, 
Because this is pretty heavy. This is like too heavy for me to do a fly with. So, a little tip you could do. Just pull the weight out. And then this left arm is already in the starting position. Walk it back. And then now the right arm is in the starting position. So I didn't have to fucking do some crazy shit and hurt my forearms to get ready to do this set. Nah. 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 All right, drop the weight. Let's do some flies. Doing them like that, I definitely like the feeling of like really stretching out the chest. <sighs> All right, one more set. Uh, what do I want to do for this one? Maybe uh, huh. A little bit of a triple drop set on the last one. So, uh, I'm thinking standard set of flies, like in front of you, and then same weight, do some downward flies, get a little bit of lower peck action going. Not necessarily a ton, but you know, obviously, you're gonna wanna get a little lower peck work just because it's gonna help give you a, uh, it's like if you think of your peck in like four corners, like if you were to cut it in half down the middle of it, and then down the middle sideways, you know, that lower quadrant, that's gonna get a little thicker by doing decline stuff, but not a lot. You definitely do not need a lot of that. So normal flies, decline flies, and then some presses, and we go check the pump. Should be pretty damn brutal. Actually, I already know it's brutal. I can feel it. Chest is now complete. Let's go check out the pump. Oh. 
Uh. So, got a little complicated towards the end when I threw in those, uh, especially that triple drop set. But for the most part, uh, relatively simple workout. A lot of pressing and then a lot of flies. And what else are you gonna do for chest? Shoulder pumps and the arm pumps are nice because you take the uh, the pump cover off and your stringer or your cutoff just shows everything. But the chest pump, you got to go one level deeper to expose it, at least all of it. That is a considerable amount of beef. We're not necessarily there yet, but definitely getting close to that little chest shelf, right? Or hypothetically, your upper chest gets so protrusive right at the right at the top, like at your collarbone, to the point where, you know, hypothetically, you could put like a shaker cup on it. And you just sit there and flex and it'll stay on that's uh that's a few levels above me so far but no that just means i got more room to grow all right so uh, there we go. Yeah. yeah i don't really this fucking stringer this one I accidentally made a little too thin and low. Typically I like for this bottom part to match right at about here. So like the bottom of my lats, this one, I kind of fucked up a little. People ask me uh, at least a lot in the TikTok, like, where do I get my shirts? Where do I get all these, you know, tasteful, plain, oversized tees or all the black cutoffs and whatnot. And uh, for the most part, either when I'm home, my, uh, my mom will get them for me. Shout out to you, mama. Or I'll go to Goodwill and I'll just peruse the, uh, like the two or three XL aisles. Cause you can find a lot of cool shit in there. I like a lot of my favorite shirts have just been from like thrifting and stuff. And I mean, if I were to get them straight from the source, I'm paying the equivalent of like five other awesome Goodwill steals. Five, not four for one shirt. I mean, it seems kind of foolish. So, you know, it's not to say that I'm uh, environmentally friendly and I want to, you know, reuse things instead of buying the mill. It's more like I'm just not necessarily super materialistic with it. So if I can get a badass t-shirt for, for like four bucks, guess what I'm going to do, you know? I'm not going to go buy uh, a Gymshark athletic tee 
for 40, uh, 40 smackaroos. But if I ever release some kind of t-shirt, then you can forget all about that and you just need to, you need to equip yourself with whatever I'm putting out. <laughs> uh, that'll, that'll be a future endeavor. So I got some shoulders to do and some calves, but I kind of want to just bust through it and then get back home, go to sleep. So I think this will be the end here. Maybe I'll come back in the car. I still got one more meal to eat, but I will see you either there or next time.